Welcome to this week's episode of Conversations Different, a weekly podcast from the Santa Fe New Mexican. This is Inez Russell Gomez, and today we have the pleasure of talking to Gabe Tafoya, Orchestra Director for Santa Fe High School. He and his students recently were chosen as the 2024 Honor Orchestra for the entire state of New Mexico by the New Mexico Music Educators Association. With Gabe today are two special guests. I'll let him introduce them. Thanks, Gabe, for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. So as Inez said, my name is Gabe Tafoya. I'm the orchestra director at Santa Fe High School. And I have two of my students with me today. So we have Emma Rose Martinez. Hello. And we have Alexis Moots. Hi. Both violinists and seniors in the program. Well, I want to say to both those young ladies that they are more successful than I am at the violin. (laughs) I was ejected from the New Mexico Highlands University toddler program when I was like five because my violin playing was so atrociously bad. And they thought maybe when you're older, you'll get better. I did not. So it was very painful. (laughs) But, you know, despite failure and rejection, here we are today. And I want to first ask you, Gabe, what does it mean to be the Honor Orchestra? And you guys didn't just get a title. You got to play at Pope Joy Hall. Yes, exactly. So the Honor Orchestra, it's an audition process. You have to submit an audio recording, copies of scores, and a bunch of information about your ensemble that goes before a panel of members of the NMMEA, and they choose who they think sounded the best it alternates every year between middle school and high school programs so this was the the high school year and you know it's it's a huge honor because it's a committee of professional musicians saying your group sounded the best of everybody who submitted an audition and you get to do a 30 minute set on stage at the all-state festival at Pope Joy Hall, which is an incredible venue that even a lot of professional musicians don't get a chance to perform at. Right. So that's like you're on stage and a lot of people are looking at you. How did that feel, Emma Rose? Um, It was amazing. I don't think we've ever performed in front of that big of an audience. And it was just an amazing feeling. We were able to really feel like we're stepping into a little professional setting there. So it was really nice. And Alexis, um, when you were preparing how did you practice how did you get ready so that you would do your best um me as like as a whole we all would practice after school every every thursday i believe for about an hour so that's on top of whatever you do in school yeah that's on top of that and then on top of you know practicing the pieces just for the concerts we do for our parents and so so we just a lot of preparation went into this we had you know just like i guess for like the first month we were just practicing those the few songs for our first concert and then we had a few uh like the next some or quarter it was the songs for that next concert and it was just practice after practice piece after piece (laughs) and so it was a lot but it was it was worth it in the end that's awesome now how did you two young ladies become involved in orchestra because not everyone plays the violin that's you know kind of a specialty kind of instrument Um, So during my preschool class, we had show and tell, and one kid brought in his violin and played Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I was just (laughs) mesmerized by the instrument, and I went home that day, and I told my mom I wanted to get into the violin, and sure enough, she got me into lessons. That's pretty awesome. (laughs) That's about the point where I got ejected. (laughs) And how did you learn to play the violin? Um... I, well, my family's never been musical. They've always been, you know, into sports. And so I grew up playing sports. Like, none of my family was ever into instruments or anything. Right, right. I, honestly, it was just, I was just listening. Like, one day I accidentally stumbled upon a orchestra piece. And then I just, I I watched it or listened to it and then listened to more. And then I fell in love with it. And at the time I was in middle school when I kind of found these pieces. And I didn't have a... A, I went to Turquoise Trail, and they didn't have any orchestra right, right. program there. And so I was forced to kind of learn by myself. And so and I think it was eighth grade. My teacher, he was like, I have one. I have a violin. It's crappy, but here it is. And so I, you know, there was no one there to teach me. He didn't know how to play it. So he was just like, take it home. Let's see what you can do with it. And so 
I just, I, I had to like put my own tapes on it and everything. And I was just, it was rough, but I mean, I wanted to do it so bad. But like my parents, you know, my sister was going to college. And so, you know, doing lessons wasn't really in the option for us. Right. That makes sense. So that just as an aside, one of the things people forget when they go after going to a charter school is that a lot of those schools do not have the activities of just a regular public school. So had you been, let's say, at Milagro, if it was open then, or at like Gonzales Community School or something with a K through eight, they have orchestras and you teach at the high school, but you also teach at middle school. Is that correct? I think yes. that's what Christina said. Yes. I've been at a couple different schools throughout my time in SFPS. I did two years at Mandela and I taught at DeVargas middle school the last year that they were still a thing before they got combined with Capshaw um, and currently teach at Milagro middle school. It's my second year there. Right. And they have a mariachi program at Milagro now. It's an after-school program. Right. It's not directly tied to the school. Anybody from – there's students from PECOS and students from just the community who oh, participate nice. in that. So had that been existing when you were at Turquoise Trail, you could have – Gone after school. Yeah. Well, I so I played volleyball at Nino Otero, and so every time we'd have practice, the orchestra would be outside practicing. And I just like every time I was like, I wish I had an orchestra. Oh. And I couldn't, I, my parents didn't let me transfer, so I was just kind of stuck yep. watching them from the side. But you were stubborn, and you kept doing it. And so you've really only played with a group for four years of high school. Three. Oh, three. Yeah, I didn't do um, freshman because of COVID, and oh, if, that's it was right. gonna, if it was going to be my first time actually learning from a teacher, I didn't want to do it online and through a screen. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause you guys had your education interrupted mm-hmm. for part of it. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Where did you go to elementary school in middle school? Um, I went to Wood Gormley for elementary school and then for middle school, I went to ATC and then for part of my high school, I was also there and, um, they had acoustic Americana. So that's like fiddling, which is a little bit different than orchestra. And that was fun. It was a great experience, but I still wanted to be in an orchestra. Makes sense. Yeah, you probably played with Sophie Barker. Yes, I did. Yep, yep. I have seen her Americana video Mm -hmm. fiddlings. It's fun. Yeah, that's good. What do you do to get kids to want to be in orchestra? Because it's not necessarily the elective that people think about always. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's challenging because, like you said, it's not the elective most people think about. It's also challenging for students who come up from middle school because they might have done it 6th, 7th, 8th grade, and they're like, I want to try something different because Santa Fe High has tons of elective options. So it's hard to get people like to get in in their freshman year because they also only have one elective slot. So oh. it's like... Do I want to do orchestra or are there a million other things that I want to try out? Right, right. So we do a lot of recruitment stuff. Uh, We'll usually do a tour towards the end of the school year where we travel to all the different middle schools and I take some of my top players and we perform for the middle schoolers and just tell them like how much fun it is to be in the high school program, how different it is from middle school. We usually see a good amount of students enroll their freshman year and quite a few of them tend to drop off their sophomore year because they're like, well, I've just done this for so long, I wanna try something else. But usually the ones who stick it out are the ones who end up like these two senior year still doing it, playing at a really high level. And you know, it, it's just that initial enticement that's challenging, um, especially with post COVID, we were trying to you know, plan trips and stuff like that. And then everything just gets complicated because you, know, you can't have students sharing a room because of quarantine and pandemic and yeah. stuff like that. So right now we're trying to just kind of establish a sense of normalcy again. Right. And this year with the honor orchestra, we couldn't really like do any trips because it was like a lot. So maybe next year we'll plan to do like a trip or something. Um, it's challenging to get what to get kids interested in doing orchestra in high school because they just have so many other options but there's always a group of kids that's just like this is what I want to do and a lot of it has to do with just me traveling to the middle schools and getting to know some of those kids and, and doing the they recruitment. already know the teacher it's a lot easier because it's not like this scary thing of like, well, who's this guy going to be, you know? That makes sense. And, And with that, we will take a quick break. We'll be back soon with another segment of Conversations Different. Thanks, Inez. This is Patrick Dorsey, publisher of the Santa Fe New Mexican. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Conversations Different with Inez Russell Gomez. 
Great local content is only possible with a talented staff dedicated to bringing you the best local content possible. For that staff to do its work, we need your support by subscribing to The Santa Fe New Mexican. If you're already a subscriber, thank you. And if not, there's never been a better time to subscribe. In addition to our home-delivered newspaper that comes with full digital access, we also provide digital-only subscriptions for SantaFeNewMexican.com. We'll also be releasing more online-only audio and video programming moving forward. The Santa Fe New Mexican has been here for nearly 175 years, and we want to continue being your source for local news and information. Visit us at SantaFeNewMexican.com slash subscribe or call us at 505-986-3010. Thank you. It's a new day in New Mexico, and the doors to boundless opportunity are open as tens of thousands of New Mexicans reach higher to pursue a dream, broaden their horizons, and retrain for a better job. With the New Mexico Lottery and Opportunity Scholarships, you could build yourself a better future anywhere in the state. You put in the hard work, we'll help with the costs. For eligibility details, visit ReachHireNM.com. We are back with Conversations Different, talking to Gabe Tafoya, who is the orchestra director at Santa Fe High. I want to talk to him about how he selected the music for the Honor Orchestra, because uh, we were talking ahead of time, and he said it was a very tight window, 30 minutes, no shorter, no longer. And how do you fit the pieces? Because you guys played a number of different pieces. Yeah, we did six pieces in total, and I wasn't sure how many we were going to be able to fit. Um, I sat down after we got the acceptance email from the NMMEA this summer and just, I mean, I spent days perusing um, JW Pepper, which is the website where I usually buy my sheet music, just looking for repertoire. And, you know, I was looking for it has to be challenging enough, but not super difficult. And I didn't really have like a theme in mind. I just wanted to do music that I thought the students would enjoy playing. Right. And that I thought would be something different because, you know, they're going to be working on this for a really long time and really digging in. And I didn't want it to be like stuffy, boring classical music and stuff that the students didn't want to play. So I arranged a mariachi piece, Jesusita and Chihuahua, and they all said that was their favorite. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, the rest of it, I just, you know, I perused J.W. Pepper and I found a lot of like new composers who like this is like brand new maybe this piece was published like one or two years ago like something new something exciting i didn't want to do the same old same old stuff okay and the reason you picked one of the mariachi songs is that that's something you do in your spare time if you have any because i think being in music a teacher is always time consuming but you're with mariachi azteca is that right yes i've been with mariachi azteca for five or six years now. I joined them maybe about a year before the pandemic and then everything blew up and then now we're getting back together. So, Yeah, yeah I got to hear you play recently and boy, if you get a chance, that, that's, they're really amazing. Yes. Yeah, that must be kind of interesting as a student because you see someone who's a teacher but also who's a professional musician and maybe that's not what you want to be in life but it gives you an idea that even with a career you could play music on the side is that something Emma Rose you hope to do? Um, Yes it is exactly Um, and Mr. Tafoya actually started I met him he was my mariachi teacher when I started back in 2019 before I even went to Santa Fe High And then when I um, transferred to Santa Fe High and I knew he was the orchestra teacher that immediately wanted me in the orchestra class. And just seeing him as an example, it's really great for what I want to do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I I think one of the things that's nice about Santa Fe is there's so many people like, you know, half the lawyers in town are in bands Mm -hmm. and, you know, they're doing music and you know, making a living and feeding their family. Now, you said before we came in that you wanted to go into film. How does music help you with that ambition? Oh, it is probably one of the key elements for me when I when I think of film. It's always music. I base a lot of my short films that I do off of the music. I, I pick a song and then I create a story around that song or a story just around that feeling, and then I end up producing it and. 
it, it, music is just such a big aspect in my life and in what I want to do in the future. I mean, I guess, for example, the one thing that got me into film was um, Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Okay. Because I watched it behind the scenes and the biggest thing that stuck out to me that actually captured me was the how they created the music and how he like wanted it to be very authentic. So they went to a chapel and recorded all of that. And it was just that, like, I want to be able to go in and do that sort of thing. So you're talking maybe maybe you'll be a director later, but at, what you're really interested in is the sound and, and how that fits to create yeah. the atmosphere for the movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I had no idea that there was such a thing when I was your age. That's, that's yeah. really, that's awesome. I think it goes back to the idea that music is something that prepares you for life. What do you think the big lessons your students have learned this year? I think commitment is a big one, hard work, dedication. You know, everybody freaked out a little bit when I first told them that we were going to be the honor orchestra, and they're like, what's that? And I told them we're going to be performing at Allstate, and they were, like, freaking out about it. I handed them this huge stack of music and said, this is everything we're going to be playing. And there was a moment of panic because they're like, oh my god what are we gonna do like this is so much i actually had a student quit the class because she was like this is too much i can't do this and you know i tried talking her out of it like you know we're only gonna do just these two for this concert and she's like like it's yeah it's, it's staggered but still that there, there was a lot of like how do we how do we tackle this so i think you know time management is a big thing that music teaches you That's right because you play your violin but you still have to do your homework and make up your bed which i'm sure <laughs> yes. both of you girls do yeah <laughs> So it's one of those classes that people talk so much about education as career preparation, which I think is, is kind of the wrong way to look at it, but it's more like life preparation. What drew you to violin? First you, Emma Rose. Um, I don't know. I think it was just like the range. I really loved how high the strings could go for one, um, and then just like the shifting and everything. And then that one kid, when he brought it in for show and tell, I was just like amazed and I wanted to pursue it further. Yeah. yeah. So you knew right away and, yeah. and you liked the way it sounded as well. Yeah. I, I like that. Um, I like that it got like the main melody in most songs. Like that was like the, that's the key thing you kind of hear whenever you listen to an orchestra song or a mariachi song. And growing up in a, well, my mom's half, my, my mom's Mexican and my dad's white. So growing up in that kind of household, I always <laughs> had you know, mariachi blasting from every part of the household. <laughs> right. And so, you know, it was just the, you know, like Emma Rose said, it's the high string. And so it's the one thing you can actually like predominantly hear. And that's what drew me to it, really. Nice. So you also grew up in music in Santa Fe because you're born and raised. And is it hard for you now being a demon instead of a horseman? I have to, <laughs> I have to ask you that tough question. No, it's not. Oh, um, <laughs> well, um, I never really wanted to go to St. Mike's in the first place. My parents sent me there because my dad was a math teacher there. So they're oh. like, well, you're just going to go to St. Mike's. I, I used to ask all the time if I could transfer to Santa Fe High. And it was like, no, that school's too big. You're going to go to St. Mike's. <laughs> So it was, um, I feel like more of a demon at this point than a horseman because I've been there for longer. That makes sense. And you probably had a wonderful time in high school, too. And I know they have a really good music program and have for a, a long, long time. Yeah. So you played in orchestra band. What did you play in high school? There was no orchestra at St. Mike's when I was there. It's fairly new. I think it's only been around a couple mm -hmm. years. I played guitar in okay. high school. and. Dorothy Kincaid was my guitar teacher, and she's, like, the reason I wanted to become a music teacher in the first place. And they only had one level of guitar, beginner guitar, but I took it all four years of high school, and she would always just give me extra music, and I would go home and practice literally all night long and kind of stopped doing all my homework in all of my other classes. And I would come to school every day and be like, I learned that whole piece that you gave me yesterday. Can I have something else? Wow. And she didn't know how to keep up with me. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's the example of a school kind of adjusting or the teacher probably probably wasn't the entire school because St. Mike's could be very rule oriented. But that's the teacher adjusting to what you needed. Yes, exactly. My kid went up through the No Child Left Behind, and it was very hard to make adjustments. So it's always nice to hear that that still happens. Yeah. yeah. How do you guys fit orchestra in with your lives? Because obviously you're seniors in high school. You're getting ready for whatever happens next. So you're pretty busy, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, I always find um, playing the violin is just like a little escape from whatever's going on in my life um, currently. So it's just a nice place to go when I want to go. <laughs> nice, nice. I, 
I mean, well, since I'm a senior, you know, I only have four classes, so I have like a bunch of extra time to do it because I'm, I, you know, I don't have a fourth period or I don't have a seventh, so I just have all the extra time to do it. But even before, um, I remember, like sophomore year when I started, I was in volleyball from since freshman year, so juggling those two on top of orchestra, it was one of the most difficult things I can right. <laughs> I can't explain. That prepares you for the day if you ever want to have children for when you have a children, a job, <laughs> and, and a husband because you juggle so many things. And yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. high school. I always think high school got me ready for being a mom more than anything I ever did because I was so busy. Um, anyway, on that note, we will take one more break and we'll be back with our final segment for Conversations Different. My name is Maria Jose Rodriguez Cadiz, and I am the Executive Director with Solace Sexual Assault Services. Our mission is to prevent sexual violence and empower survivors of sexual violence through restoring dignity, strength, and resiliency. For almost 51 years, Solace has reduced the impact of sexual violence. We do it by focusing on human rights, social justice, hope, and dignity. We believe survivors are experts in their own experiences and acknowledge that empowering them is crucial to their healing. Our advocacy, forensic interviewing, and therapy services are centered to their needs. Our sexual violence prevention programs in schools and community is just as important. Please check our website at findsolace.org. And if in need, you can call our 24-7 hotline, which is 800-721-7273. Your support is crucial to the lives of survivors. Thank you. Gracias. We are back with conversations different talking to orchestra director Gabe Tafoya and his students. In our break, we had an interesting conversation about balancing the things in your life. And Alexis, I want to talk to you. How did you play volleyball and do orchestra? So like I was saying during the break, I, you know, I had to pick a lot of times between, you know, it was simply just do I want to do I have to go to practice or do I want to go to this concert? Do I want to go to this game? Do I want to go to the concert? And so it was just, you know, I guess at the end of the day, it was kind of deciding what was more important to me and what I cared about more. And I think it was what would take me further in life. Right. And, you know, volleyball is an extremely competitive sport. San Jose High, it's competitive. But when you're trying to go D1 or college, right. even D2 is extremely competitive. And so, you know, I had a kind of I said, sat down with my parents and stuff. And like I said, I grew up in a predominantly sports household. They were always fans of me choosing the sport over something like music because they their whole thing was it's not going to take you far sports can sports can get you scholarships sports can do this for you and so I was always having to juggle like you know what do do I care more about this like this is my passion but I love volleyball do I want to continue with volleyball in the future or not and so finally I just ended up quitting volleyball this coming summer or this yeah this year I quit volleyball and then I decided to just focus on film and orchestra Wow, so that's a hard decision because it, was, it took a very long time to decide that yeah. it, it wasn't. You know, it's not just something that I was like woke up and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I mean, I had spent countless hours crying about like this has been my sport I've played since I was in elementary. Right. So right. I want to leave that for a instrument I've been playing for like three and a half years. Yeah, but that shows how much you love music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I quit volleyball and basketball going into high school because you couldn't do that in marching band, and there was it was getting a little too crazy. And and sometimes you do make those choices, and then when you get into life, you make even more choices. And this kind of gets you ready for how you oh, now yeah. you know your decision process. Oh yeah, it yeah. it takes a lot. My decision process is very long, but you know, <laughs> like I said, since my parents weren't really they were supportive but they weren't they were like i'd rather you do sports so i didn't i had a at the end of the day i had to decide for myself it wasn't like i had no one to influence me right yeah that's how you grow up Mm -hmm. and one of the things i noticed when i saw the picture of the orchestra is that there's not a ton of kids so you guys have to do it how many 18 how many are in it 18 total which is very small for like a high school orchestra yes yes so that's even more impressive when you think about it 
Yeah, there's a lot of individual responsibility on students. Like, you know, these two are our only second violins. (laughs) And there's a lot of individual responsibility because if there's a Devisi part where they're both playing something separate, there's one person playing that part. And it's a lot of individual responsibility. Mm -hmm. When you play in a section with, you know, 12 other people, nobody's going to notice if you make a mistake or you drop a part. But when it's just you, there's a lot of responsibility. So you guys got to be soloists without even trying. (laughs) I know it was very difficult and we had to go in some after school days to really grind and get the parts down. Mm -hmm. But I'm very proud of ourselves and we managed to do it. So yeah, very proud. You know, whenever there's just two, you don't really, you know, it's hard to kind of hear them. So every time we're like, need to play louder, need to play louder. When I was in band, the band director used to suggest I take a break once in a while because I was always out of tune and didn't notice it. And he's like, can you hear that? And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, why don't you rest? You're tired. So not everybody brings out the best in you, like Mr. Tafoya obviously has. So what's next for you guys? Our next thing is that we have to prepare for music performance assessment, which is in March. And we're carrying over two of our pieces that we already know, so at least we can not like totally kill ourselves getting ready for that and then we're going to learn one new piece and we host that event at santa fe high also so so is that like a a contest or is yes so you get rated one two three four kind of thing yes right so you'll have judges and Mm -hmm. yeah those are always nerve-wracking yeah, I think it's a really good experience, though, overall, and we really get to grow as musicians, so I really appreciate that opportunity. Um, oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's one of the interesting things about different personalities is the people who rise to a performance challenge or to yeah. a competition challenge. That's mm-hmm. If you do your best, that, that's a good sign for life. Well, we have been happy to have you as a guest, both you young ladies mm-hmm. and Mr. Tafoya, And we will be back again with another edition of Conversations Different.